Hello, hello. Welcome, everybody, to my show, Rate My Retirement. My name is Dan Casey. So I'm going to be bringing on my guest in just a minute, where we're going to review his entire retirement plan. I'm going to give you my thoughts, and you, the viewer, can ask questions or tell me I'm crazy. And uh, tell me if there's a much, much better way to do what I'm advising. Whatever it is, let's have a discussion. So if you're watching this live, then feel free to ask questions uh, via Facebook chat somewhere on your page. I have no idea where it is for you. I'll see them on my screen. Ryan, the producer, will jump in and let me know if there's a question, and we'll answer them. Um, just a couple show notes. If you like the page on Facebook here, uh, then you'll get notifications when I do a new show. Um, and if you're watching on YouTube, then uh, like and subscribe, and you'll get notifications when I post future recordings. Um, like I said, I have my live producer on Ryan uh, in the wings, so he's going to be helping me out, bringing up slides and asking questions if anybody's got any. Just real quick about me, I've been an independent financial advisor for 20 years now with my own firm. Uh, I've been blessed to never have to work for one of the big brokerage firms uh, telling me what's best for my clients when uh, usually it wasn't always the case. Um, I was asked to go out to Delaware, uh, Williamton, Delaware, to do a, a TEDx talk, out to High Point University uh, to do a talk on inflation. Uh, and then um, now I'm uh, being invited by you fine folks to come into your house, business, your car, wherever. Um, so let's get started. I have with me uh, right now, Michael and uh, Phyllis Desjarnet. Hopefully I said that right. Thanks for joining me, Mike. Yes. Hey, Thank Mike. You. So Phyllis is probably is not joining us, right? No, no, no. She's, she's, uh, she's, she's still still like, do whatever you want, Mike, right? <laughs> yeah, retired. <laughs> All right, awesome. All right, so uh, let's jump right in. Uh, Ryan, bring up the first slide there. Uh, this is Michael and Phyllis's case study that we're going to do today. They're in South Carolina. Um, Mike, you're uh, age 63, retired military. Thank you for your service, sir. And then okay. his uh, wife, Phyllis, age 77. She works for hospice. And uh, I would say thank you for her service as well, because we all okay. know doing that kind of job is, uh, is not a job. It's probably more right. of a calling, right? Right. right. Um, well, thank you both. And then we have four children, two from a previous marriage and two step grandchildren. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Let's let's jump to let's jump to slide four, the income slide, Ryan. Let's just kind of go over some of the high level stuff here so we can uh, know where we stand here. So the income desired uh, that you uh, when you and I talked, Mike, was one hundred and twelve thousand seven hundred gross, roughly. And that's we mm -hmm. just came up with that figure because that's your Social Security, your pension, Phyllis's pension. Uh, you're working a part-time job, um, and then you're pulling some money out of your retirement accounts to get you that 112 gross. Um, so we have an income gap of 12,000. That's that's what you're taking out of your retirement accounts now. Right. Um, let's go to assets, uh, Ryan. Slide five. So retirement assets. So we've got IRAs about 269,000 between the two of you. We've got Roths uh, about combined 41,000. Taxable accounts, 374,000. And then uh, I threw in your rental equity right now. So I didn't put any equity, or I'm sorry, uh, income from the real estate because kind of what we had talked, you're pretty much breaking even. You're a little bit yeah, yeah. on the yeah. plus side, right? But so really I'm just gonna take the equity and kind of grow that along with the rest of your assets. Sure. Um, you said you're gonna do that about 15 years. Right. So what's kind of cool is you're like, you're really tax diversified. And that's probably because of your tax background. You kind of know what you're doing, I think. So yeah. you're not like way overrated, uh, overrated in the IRAs. Um, you've got a fair amount in taxable, a um, little bit in Roths. Wish we had more in Roths, but that's okay. I'll, we'll get into that in a minute. But um, so you're really tax diversified. You're not, a lot of times, of course, when people come to me, they're, they have ways, they have so much in their retirement accounts, their IRAs that required minimum distribution time is a killer, right? So you've actually done very well and, and and you're getting that that nice pension uh from the military so i'm assuming if you had the option i don't know if you did or not to roll that into your ira well then your ira would be probably huge right oh, yeah. probably be one, one and a half million right so you decided yeah, yeah. To take pension as income and yeah. we'll kind of get into the pros and cons of that but the other thing i wanted to point out on this uh, uh this slide is the the uh pie chart now, let me explain this roughly. You're also diversified in the types of assets that you have. So let me explain. Red is just money in the market. So you're going to get all the upside. You're going to get all the downside. The mm -hmm. blue um, is not necessarily less riskier than the stock market, 
but it tends to move opposite. So that's your gold, silver, and real estate. And as you know, you have the rental real estate, plus you have gold and silver and mineral rights. So really awesome there. And then the green is your principal protected stuff. So that's your, you know, your, you've got some money in cash, but a lot of it's uh, in, uh, indexed annuities or fixed annuities. Somehow they're, it's principal protected. They're not variable annuities from my understanding right. anyway of that. Right. Yeah, so, so a really, really good mix. Something I don't really see that much. So um, that's awesome. Um, so the only thing, what was I going to mention about, oh, the IRAs, I think I'm going to get that in a, in a different slide. So let's, um, let's now, any questions so far on that, Mike? No, no, not at all. You, okay. Pretty you straightforward. Just uh, recap you right of your, yeah. yeah. Pretty a recap of your life. Okay. So the next step that I do then is I kind of put all the variables that we can at least put our hands around and put them into my software to find out what rate of return you need on all your money to make sure mm -hmm. it lasts your lifetime. So some of the variables that I'm putting in, because you've got a lot of variables. Yeah. <laughs> you've got a, you've got a yeah. part-time job that you said you're going to do for 10 years. Yeah. You've maybe. got two, in, two annuities, <laughs> two annuities that are going to start kicking out income at 72. Right. 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 They don't go up with inflation, but they will continue to fill us if you pass. Right. We've got your pension. We've got Phyllis's pension. Both do go up with inflation. We've got your social security. We've got Phyllis's social security. So, and then I assumed inflation. I, I put it a little bit higher than normally. I put it at 4% okay. for the next uh, decade or so, just in right. case we do have wild inflation. I mean, it could even be more than right. that. Then I drop it down to three. I inflate social security. And as I say, I'm inflating your pension as well. So uh, to keep up with inflation. So I throw all that stuff in there. And if we were to just end with zero at age 95, for you, the rate of return to get that done is 2.13%. Not too shabby. Now, of course, you don't want to end with zero, preferably you'd like to give some money yeah. to your kids, right? Yeah. Now I know from, Maybe. from talking from talking to you, um, you know, getting through retirement, making sure you're fine is probably right. number one priority. And if there's any left, well, well then the kids can get it. Right. So in order, so endings of zero is 2.13. So that's our bottom line. That's a, the minimum you'd have to make on all your money. Okay. Now the, okay. the, the high mark is let's say, let's at least just try to see what it would take to pass on what you started with, which is about 884,000 in retirement assets. Mm -hmm. So if you ended your life with that same amount, that's kind of cool. You're living off of your uh, the income and not touching principal, that rate of return is 4% in order to make okay. sure um, that, so you end with what you started with. So really that's, so two point, somewhere between 2.13 and 4% is all you need on your money to be sure you're set for life. So not too shabby. So you can go off that slide, right? Right. So that, that makes sense, right? Uh, everything that I kind of inputted and really, cause a lot of financial advisors, they never do that. They just say, and probably like your comment before we started, all they're looking at is, oh, Mike, you're in this stock or this mutual fund, whatever. I got to get you out of that and put you in my set yeah, of mutual funds because yeah. look at how they've performed. Awesome, right? right? So when I don't even know if that makes sense for you, I don't know that until I know what rate of return you need on your money. If right, it's 2%, right. right, we can get, we don't have to get so aggressive. If that figure came back and it was like 10%, well, then we probably should be all in the market because we need, or you need to lower your income requirement, right? right? right. Makes sense. All right. All right. But for you to be set for life, all you need is somewhere between two and 4% a year. Okay. okay. Um, any questions on that at all? Um, I got one question on my mm -hmm. pension and annuity. Did you take in consideration uh, if I pass away, uh, my wife would only get about 55% of that yes. going forward. Okay. So I just wanted to make sure that that was considered in there if you at all. Boy, am I glad I did that because you would have put me on the spot and I would have said, uh, no, because <laughs> there's a perfect segue. Ryan, go to slide seven. So don't take this the wrong way, Mike, but I killed you off at 70 just to see what would okay. happen. Okay. Worst okay. case scenario. So the rate of return required for that to happen and end with what you started did bump up to 5.89. Okay. So, so yeah. So what I did is I killed you off at 70. So. Uh, Phyllis gets 55% of your pension. 
right. she is going to, in effect, lose her social security, but she Correct. gets bumped up to yours, right? Yeah. Or in other words, you, we lose yours, but hers gets uh, added on to, uh, to what mm-hmm. yours was. So yeah, so yeah. I factored all that in there. That's okay. why I went back to you and asked, you know, do, do those annuities pay out, continue after you die? You said mm-hmm. they did. So perfect. Yeah. So it's really only the pension and social security. So um, 5.89, again, still not a bad rate of return. I think a totally yeah. a doable return, right? No matter what you decide you want to invest right, in. Right, right. Um, and that's also because Phyllis is uh, older than you. Had she been yeah. the same age as you and, and had to continue for another, you know, 20, 30 years with that lower pension and that less social security, it might be it present more of a problem. But in your particular mm-hmm, case, mm-hmm. not so much. Okay. Yeah. All right, cool. So uh, that kind of helps us again determine on uh, what uh, investments you need. Okay, so the the second thing, um, or third, whatever it is, um, that I uh, like to calculate is your required minimum distribution. So obviously, we're taking your IRAs, um, really all your retirement assets that have required minimum distribution in them. You only have, uh, I think it was just the, um, yeah, the two IRAs. Roths don't mm-hmm. have RMDs, right? Yeah. Um, right? Taxable accounts don't have RMDs. Your stock accounts don't. Um, I did calculate the annuities that you have. If it was an IRA annuity, I calculated that in the RMD. Um, mm-hmm. The rest of the stuff, no RMD. So what it came down to was, slide eight, Ryan. RMD for you is 19,000. So what I did is I just projected your current retirement assets that are exposed to RMDs. I grew it by 7%. We can pick whatever number we want. And at 72, which is now the new age to have to be pulling that money out, came to 19,000. So, you know, I'm sure you don't have a problem with that figure. I don't as well, because you do have a higher income need in retirement, right? Um, If you didn't need that 19,000 at all, well, then I would say uh, we have a bigger problem. But I do want to bring up if again, if this was my money, I probably would want to convert what you have in your retirement accounts, your IRAs to Roths slowly over the years. Um, mm-hmm. The only reason why normally if someone had came to me with a 19,000 RMD, I would not lose any sleep over it. However, you've got this huge pension um, that's you know going to be paid out for the rest of your lives, both your lives. Um, and it's exposed, obviously, to the IRS's greedy little hands, right? So yeah, if yeah. tax rates go up, that pension is in effect going to be reduced, right? Your paycheck's going to be reduced. So right. the RMD, the the amount you're being forced to pull out of your IRAs is just one more uh, uh, income stream that's exposed to the IRS. I mean, we have no idea mm-hmm. what tax rates are going to be at 72, right? Right. In, right. A, in a decade from now. So if it was me, I'd say, all right, pension's on, the pros are I get this money for the rest of my life. So does Phyllis, if, I, if something happens to me. Cons, though, are I am exposed to the IRS, right? I'm in partnership with the mm-hmm. IRS, and they can change the rules at any time they want. You obviously already made that decision. You're okay with it. You'd rather have that money guaranteed for the rest of your life and not have to worry about it. I get it. Yeah. However, you, you now have this other income stream, too, that's going to start in 10 years, also exposed to higher tax rates and whatever the IRS mm-hmm. wants to do. So in my opinion, I'd probably want to take some of that non-retirement money that you have, use it and pay off the IRS on your current IRA assets, meaning convert to a Roth, use some of that money to pay the tax bill, pay the IRS, pay them off, get it into a Roth. And now that will grow forever, all tax free, no RMDs, and your kids uh, get all of that tax free. So that would be, that would be kind of, I'm assuming you've thought of that or maybe a bit presented that before. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I have, Dan, and but uh, what I've decided to do, because I'm taking a little money out now, you know, to kind of get accustomed mm-hmm. to the tax situation. Uh, but what I'm doing is I'm taking that, instead of rolling it into a Roth, I have several insurance policies, okay, that, yeah. um, that I have in place to pay out, that will basically pay my house off, okay? and uh pay another rental die, property off if you die yeah, or the cash okay if, if i die if i die but okay. while i'm waiting for that to happen they build cash value okay yeah, right. so yeah, right. 
So one of the things uh, that you mentioned in one of your videos was either putting it in a Roth or putting it into some sort of insurance policy. And I've always been a big proponent of whole life or, or universal life, yep. you know, because because I can use them. I can use it for cash withdrawal, tax free. And, you know, dude, I have a policy dude, you're, now. You're preaching to the choir. I yeah. totally get it. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. that's that's yeah. an awesome yeah. idea. So um, yeah. let's just leave it at the fact that you got that entire idea from one of my videos, okay? Even if it's oh, yeah. not true. <laughs> All right. All right. So, no, and that's and that's exactly what I yeah, usually tell people. So either, I mean, Roths or life insurance. I don't care which one and maybe both. Yeah. Um, the yeah. tax yeah. bill is the same, right? Because you're pulling out that yeah. 12000 yeah. every year. Yep. And you're right. funding right. The, the life insurance. Perfect. So. Okay. That will grow tax free, just like a Roth. It'll come out tax free mm -hmm. like a Roth, but you get the kicker of the death benefit. So if you die early, yeah. you pay off your house. I love it. I love yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely love it. Because the one insurance policy I have, the money I'm putting in, I structured the insurance to where, as I, I'm, I'm, I'm super funding the policy. Basically, I'm putting in more than than the minimum premium. Yeah, right. Overfunding it. Yep. I, yeah, yeah. I'm overfunding it, and so, so my face value, the one policy I have the face value is increasing to where at some point I'm going to have enough to pay the house off and a rental property or two, you know, if okay. I die at 70 or 72. So Perfect. that's my insurance to get rid of the mortgage in case I die. So Phyllis don't have to deal with it. Love it. Love it. Yeah. Oh, you know what I should have done in the beginning, uh, Mike mm -hmm. is tell me, like, tell us your, just your background as far as, uh, okay. What I'm in store here with, with you as far as your okay. background is in, in money? Well, I'll tell you, um, I started out, um, I came into the military in 1980, um, second lieutenant, did 12 years active duty and uh, decided to take the Air Force's early out program in 1991, 92. They gave me a bunch of money to get out. But because I had this great idea that I wanted to be a stockbroker, okay? <laughs> well, I did that. <laughs> I nice. worked for a a nationwide firm for about three years didn't quite oh, work cool. out had some personal issues had to come out of that and go back into the reserves uh for the next 16 years where i eventually retired with 28 years but along the way um, um i uh, actually work at a division one um, university texas christian university as a construction project manager because uh, my background is uh is i was an architectural engineer uh, by mm. training and uh, actually did that for seven, eight years and then got called up after 9-11 uh, where I had to uh, deploy to <laughs> South Florida of all places toward, oh, brutal. <laughs> where I was a uh, um, squadron commander for about 350 people uh, for about a year or so while the uh, um, active commander had had to deploy for it, so I did that for a year or two. Came back, um, actually um, uh, left there after getting an offer from a um, a military uh, organization here in Shaw Air Force Base. Um, uh, let, let me see, Air Force uh, Central Command, and we were responsible for all the engineering and aspects of. Air Force requirements in the Middle East. So I traveled there for nine years. And let me tell wow. you, I did more. Uh, I had more bad things happen as a civilian contractor oh, <laughs> over <no>. there <laughs> than I did when I was in uniform. Wow. You know, picture this you're walking around on a, on a military base, everybody has a gun but you because you're a contractor. That's and, a good point, huh? You know, so, so I'm not sure I like so, that. Well, you know, hey, those those were the rules, and uh, but you know, I did that for nine years. Uh, traveled and a lot. Like, and then, what's this job that you've got now? Isn't this in your, like in finance well, or something? Well, I'm dealing with. Uh, I'm working with an after school program, uh, at risk kids uh, here in the Sumter area, and I do that about two or three days a week. You know, just to give back. You know, yeah, right. Uh, That's awesome. Definitely not for the money, you know, but uh, just to give back oh. some of my. Some of my knowledge and uh, I think experience you, you, out there. you and your wife, you've got the uh, the giving back things uh, done yeah. and set. So thank you both yeah, for that. Yeah. All right, Appreciate cool. It. So let's. So I wanted to make sure everybody knew like uh, what I was up against here with you. And uh, so you're 
<laughs> so so far you're doing yeah. awesome. All right, so I was, yeah, I was insurance license and Series Seven sixty three license back in the early nineties. So oh, nice, nice, wow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it wasn't the Series Seven fun. Okay, so uh, yeah. let's yeah. <laughs> so jump to a slide nine, um, okay. Ryan. So really, um, the, all this slide was was showing is a lot of times, uh, you know, people are paying more in social security taxation uh, after their required minimum distribution kicks in. But for you, it's not really going to make that big of a difference because your pension is always already causing uh, the maximum amount of your social yeah. security being taxable. So yeah, I just wanted to bring that up. There's nothing really you can do about that. Again, that's the downside yeah. with the pension. Uh, but you you understand that. Um, Good problem to have. <laughs> yeah, th that's exactly well said. Um, and then, uh, well, I guess we can skip slide 10. I was going to talk a little bit more about conversions. You're not really doing uh, conversions. You're going to just pull out and put it into life insurance. Let me just make sure paying taxes. No RMDs, tax free. Gift, uh, yeah, perfect. No, life insurance ticks all the box off, basically, that Roths do. Um, in fact, it's one even better because if the money that's in a Roth still exposed to the SECURE Act that passed in January 1st, 2020, meaning when you guys pass, your kids are going to have to deplete all these retirement accounts, right? With over a 10 year period, whether it's in a Roth or not. Yeah. Um, so it doesn't escape the SECURE Act in the sense that it has to be withdrawn, uh, but it's all tax free. So who cares? Um, yeah. Yeah. But with life insurance, they're obviously you, you skip all that. So yeah. even yeah. even better. It's just the, the a lot of times you're already on board with this, but anytime I say sometimes the word life insurance, people, you know, run screaming out of my office, like, yeah, yeah, oh my gosh, yeah. he's a life insurance salesman. He's trying to sell me life insurance. <laughs> and then, you, you know, you try to yeah. Google it online and you just fall down a rabbit hole, right? And you get nowhere. Yeah. Um, all right. So we're going to skip that slide. All right. Let's get into issues and concerns. So Ryan, bring up slide two. All right. So the first one is holdings versus your risk tolerance. Now, Again, you know what you're doing. So um, I just wanted to point this out. When we first talked, you told me you were a six out of 10, meaning one super conservative, 10 super aggressive. Um, so a six uh, means, you know, fairly conservative. However, mm -hmm. um, you know, in your, in the money market, in the stuff that's in the market, you are like uh, almost a hundred percent in uh, individual stocks. I'd probably say right. maybe like 80, 80%. Right. So to me, that's a little scary. I'm not going to lie. Um, so, you know, stocks, individual stocks, you're not as diversified. You're more exposed to if one or two stocks go down. Um, oh, you know what? I'll bring that up on slide three. Okay. So the next issue was, oh, and just to, just to kind of recap on that. So yes, you're in my view, taking a little bit more risk in the, uh, the red bucket or the, the, uh, market bucket. Of course, you do have a fair amount of safe money, um, annuities and things. Um, but in a, in a serious market crash, you know, like we saw in the years 2001, two, three and right. 2008, right. you could lose half of that portfolio. So, yeah, um, of, of course it all comes back. But again, if, if, if you're, if the plan was to pull money out to fund this life policy and you're pulling it out during a market crash, that could, that could spell for a disaster. All right. So, yeah. but you know that, right. I'm probably not telling you anything you don't know. All right. So the yeah. list, next thing, list of accounts. So this, this, you probably are aware of, you got a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. And I think, again, you probably have it fully under control. Heck, you're retired. What else you got to do? Monitor these accounts. But I think the yeah. problem might be- <laughs> That's all happens. I got to do, man. <laughs> That's right. But what happens if something happens to you? So look, know, we've, got, right? <laughs> we've got two Roths. We've got two IRAs. We've got two taxable accounts. We've got two stock accounts. We've got four annuities. We have two life policies. We have two mineral rights. We have five checkings and savings. And yeah. if you're like a lot of the people that come into my office, you've got that many checking and savings because probably one bank was giving you some low rate or something, right? Yeah. I'm yeah. sorry, giving yeah. you a, like a, a great rate on some investment. So if you deposited money there, right, that's probably why you have five checking and savings accounts, mm -hmm. right? Am I right? Yeah, Am I right? yeah, okay. that's true. Uh, but what I've also done, I've come to the realization that uh, I got all this stuff. So uh, in the military, we always have contingency plans. Yeah, yeah, right. And uh, I have, I have built a what I call a contingency booklet, where mm -hmm. if I drop dead tomorrow, okay, my wife can pull that booklet out, and it tells her what to do. Step one, step two, and it lists all the accounts. And will and she be able to do all that herself? 
Well, no, uh, but uh, I have a um, my stepdaughter who's here assisting us because she she's in dialysis right now. My mm. uh, my wife. Your wife. Yep. Yeah, and she helps. Um, she helps us. So I figured uh, she would uh, help her kind of go through this book because it's pretty thick. Okay. But it's been, yeah, a, it's, been a work, it's been a work in progress. And All right. So I have, yeah. Go ahead. Constantly Sorry. keep it up, Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. So th- I guess my my thought on that would be um, even with the book, it's going to be a nightmare. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Trying to get these yeah. things because. You know, there's there's beneficiary forms that I guarantee you I will bet yeah. money that are not properly filled out, right? Um, there's yeah. there's probably loopholes. In fact, go to uh, slide three, Ryan. That my main my main bit of advice to you would be to just get a trust. Um, yeah, I get the book is good and the book probably will help, but if you if you spell out in the trust where you want your money to go, especially because we've got uh, kids from a different marriage, we've got grandkids yeah. maybe that you want to you know, provide for, but they're under the age of majority. So I would just highly recommend that you get a trust. Um, you said you had a will, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. A living will so, and, a, and a medical uh, thing, medical director. Okay, so, yeah. All right, so that'll help, but it's just really just a Band-Aid because a, a will... Okay is just a, another piece of evidence in probate. So you don't avoid probate with a will. You can say right. whatever you want in that will. You can say whoever's going to get whatever in that will, but it's still going to go to probate and a judge will look at the will. But usually if if kids come out, kids start arguing, the the ones that are going to win are whoever has the best lawyers sometimes. So mm-hmm. um, if you just spell it all out in a trust, it's it's um, it's probably the best way to go. And then and then you just all non retirement accounts go in the name of the trust. And then all uh, benefit or uh, IRA accounts. And again, a lawyer would have to advise you more. But usually, right. what I see yeah. is the main beneficiary would be Phyllis, but then the contingent would be the trust. So in case something happens to right. both of yeah. you, the trust then will disperse the funds. Um, again, with the with the second marriage and everything, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I have uh, I have been engaged with an attorney. Uh, he gave me an initial consultation on the trust. Okay, but cool. I just want I just wanted to be sure, you know. Uh, that was the way I needed to go. And yeah. uh, what did it, he it, advise? It sounds like, yeah, sounds like it is. <laughs> did, what did he advise you? Have you met with him yet? Uh, oh, oh yeah, he, he he advised me wholeheartedly. You know, oh, okay, so and, trust. You know, but it was that twenty eight hundred dollars that kind of uh, woke me up a little bit. <laughs> but but I know I know those. That's probably about an average cost for something like that. You know, it so, is. You know where yeah. where we are we do it for 1995 but it's it's not that far off so um yeah, yeah. yeah just just bite the bullet i know it's it's something you don't want to have to spend your yeah, money on yeah, but yeah. trust me yeah. if, if any of this money is going to go through probate and i can tell you mm-hmm. as of right now the way these accounts are set up some of this money will go through probate by the time they okay. hire a lawyer you know yeah. it's going to be way more than 2800 so yeah 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 um okay, which brings me to the next uh bullet point on slide three ryan guaranteed beneficiary issue so I guarantee you that with all these accounts set up, there's somewhere on there where the beneficiaries are not set up properly. In fact, in my hands right here is uh, that fidelity statement that you sent me. And mm-hmm. it says, yeah, I don't know if you read this, you are missing named beneficiaries on one or more accounts. I'm sh- okay. Did you see that on your fidelity statement? No, I didn't. <laughs> no. <laughs> and, I, no. and I kind of pride myself in, in making sure those beneficiaries are right. And I think that may have been the one I just opened up. Okay. Uh, oh, oh because, okay. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, the first one I had was a transfer on death, which was my taxable account. And the second one I just opened up about three months ago. That's probably oh, okay. the one. Yeah, All right, that's so- probably the one. So when you get a trust put together, what they normally would do is they will create a will, but it's called a pour over will, meaning yeah. if you do open an account not in the name of the trust and you die soon after, that clause in that will says that that account belongs in the trust. Um, okay. To, so, so it would stop issues like that. Um, right, right. But yeah, uh, all, all the, and you said you have a TOD, right? Or POD, pay, payable yeah, on death? T- t- a TOD, a transfer on death. That was... Yep. The, the initial tax for policy, but I opened up the new and I didn't do a transfer on death for some reason. I'm, I'm not real sure right now, but the work, okay. yeah, I didn't do it on, on the new one I, I just opened, but 
One okay. question I do have about the trust is, um, can I decide or could I get some help with deciding what I need to put in that trust? Because one of the things I want to put in that trust is at least one property. Okay. Yes. At least one property. Okay. So the lawyer will advise you on that. So usually okay. what they do is, cause I had rental property myself is you, you form your own LLC and then maybe they'll throw that in there for, for 2,800 bucks. Right. I would suggest you throw that in there. Um, okay. Okay. But you get an LLC just for your yeah. rentals. Now he's going to tell okay. you, you probably need an LLC for each one of your rentals. That's like yeah. the Cadillac. That's the way it really should be done because really that limits the liability in each one of your rental properties. So if that tenant sues you, they can only go after what's in that yeah. LLC. So, um, so if you just get one LLC though, yeah, that, that can be dealt with, with that. Um, but your trust okay. trust should, um, you be used for like your current home, the deed should be changed to the trust and that kind of stuff. And, mm -hmm. and then I was just going to okay. say one comment on the TOD. If you do have any of those that will avoid probate, However, it's just a, a death issue, meaning if you, yeah. let's say you get in a car accident, Phyllis dies in the one that you become incapacitated in and you can't talk or write, that TOD is completely useless. useless. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. if, you know, if your daughter is going to help you and needs money to get out of that for your care or whatever, she can't touch it until it goes through probate. A trust okay. will take care of all that. Okay. Um, oh, and then that last bullet point on slide three. Um, just again, I, this was back to, um, your risk tolerance. You told me a six, but yet in your risk accounts, really almost, pit, I think 50% of your portfolio, yeah. that one IRA that you have the big one or in three tech stocks. Yeah. Apple yeah, yeah. All right, so you're, and, and, oh, yeah. Believe it or not, Dan, I just made adjustments to that. Just to oh, are you serious? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah I, uh, I, right, I trade options as well. I sell options against a lot of these. Yeah. yeah and, right. Uh, and Apple, you know, got exercised early and I looked at it and I said, wow, um, I only need to. So I went in and actually bought half of it back again. So that and, and Qualcomm should be coming up the same thing. And I'll do the same thing with it, only buy half okay. of it back. And Amazon, I just sold off half of that, you know, because I mean, it had a huge, huge run up. So. I yes, that's that. yeah, yeah, that's yeah. And that happens, me, right? When you get huge run ups, yeah, you get out of yeah. whack a little bit, overweighted, and you want to do yeah. what just what you're doing. Take some take some off the table, right? Yeah. Play with the house's yeah. money, put it back, but yeah, diversify a little bit more so you're not so Yeah, diversify right. a little a little more. And I realized that Ryan, over cool. the last several months. So Yeah, okay, perfect. Um and then that last bullet point, right? As soon as you come off the slide, I gotta have you come up to, but just don't stay on it too long. So contributing the full amount to the raw. So the only thing I wanted to say about that was, um, I think in our talks, you're, you said you're fully funding uh, your Roth. However, uh, well, you're in... okay, go ahead. Well, what, what I'm doing, Dan, is is a little part-time job I got, okay? Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm, I'm funding it up to that income level. Oh, perfect. Because okay. I know I can't, go over, I can't go over what I make. So- Okay, uh, that, I just wanted to clarify that. Right, right. I think okay. in my notes, I, I wrote down probably erroneously that you're fully funding the Roth, but yeah, you're not. Okay. So, and then it, yeah. then it came to me that you're, wait, you're only making 4,800, yeah. uh, that you can only put in 4,800 if that's how much you're making. Okay. Right, cool. right, right. All right. Awesome. Um, oh, uh, oh, the last slide, Ryan, uh, I think, unless you have, do you have any uh, questions right now for me, Mike? Uh, no. No, no, no. Uh, good rundown. Uh, appreciate it. And, you know, it kind of helps me, you know, um, look at the big picture again to see what I need to do to, to move everything Perfect. forward. Because sometimes sometimes you get bogged down in the in the forest. <laughs> well, know? and that's, again, another another yeah. downside of having so many accounts like you do. Sometimes it's yeah. just, I, I would imagine it gets overwhelming. So, yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. probably want to yeah. consolidate if you, um, you know, bring up that last slide, Ryan. So this is, um, oh, so I did do just a quick exercise on if you did want to get more out of your IRAs or quicker or whatever. Okay. Um, you could technically convert $80,000 a year, according to my calculations, and still stay in the 22% bracket. Um, okay. I know you're taking out 12, so it would just be if one day you, you woke up and said, oh, I think tax rates are going to go up a lot quicker than I thought. Maybe you'd want to you know, get money out quicker. 
pay right. off the IRS now, get them out of your face. And then, yeah. So yeah. Um, yeah. You do that and for if you wanted to bump it up from 12 or to whatever to 80. All right. So and then the last okay. thing, of course, is just kind of my overall general talk on how you can produce some income in retirement if you want. So you've really got a small gap again, thanks for to that that nice pension, yeah. that twelve thousand dollar gap. So you could technically um, th there's three ways you could do it. So there's growth. You could just put all your money, keep it the way it is, and in growth. And if we got a great market, you take you know your your money out that you need from the growth. Um, if it's crashing, you can maybe move you know jump over to some cash that you've got sitting, so you're not pulling it from the market. Mm -hmm. Then we've got a, a dividend portfolio you could uh, create. The current one um, is pays seven percent uh, a year. It's just a, about eight or nine ETFs. If you want that, I'll be more than happy to get that to you. Okay. Um, it's about eight or nine ETFs. So in those ETFs, you own about eighteen hundred companies. So you're super diversified, um, and right. it pays out seven percent a year. So what you would do is just take you know if if you want twelve thousand a year automatically, just take seven percent um, and divide it by twelve thousand, and that will give you how much you need in that bucket um, to kick right. off those dividends for you. And it's going right. to be, you know, less than what you've got now. So then you could just take the rest and I don't care what you do. You could just put it straight yeah. up in the market, grow, you know, whatever. It's because you'll never touch it, right? You've got the income being kicked off to you. Right, right. And then same thing um, with the annuity. Brian, bring up that last slide again. Um, so we, we covered growth, dividends, and then annuity. Same thing. If you and you you're very confident with what an annuity is because you've got a pension and you got Social Security. Both all those are basically just annuities. annuities so yeah. yeah. So if you said, all right, I'll just give, I'll I'll just call an insurance company, find out, you know, or call me or whatever. Uh, how much do I need to give them for them to pay out twelve grand for the rest of my life and the rest of Phyllis's mm -hmm. life? They'll give you a figure, hundred fifty, two hundred. I don't know what it would be. And then yeah. that way everything's taken care of. All your income's good for the rest of your life, and then you can play with whatever the heck you want to do options, mineral yeah. rights, whatever the heck you want to do for the money. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, so that's that. Any, any last questions for me? Uh, no, not right off the top of my head. <laughs> um, and I'm assuming Ryan, nobody asked any questions on Facebook. Hey, uh, no, we do not have any questions, uh, but to those viewing, we have a handful of viewers right now. Feel free to throw one final question in if you would like anything answered. Otherwise, we'll uh, we'll bring the show to a close. Awesome. All right. And you know what I always forget to tell people, too, is because I don't listen to podcasts, but I know this show, the audio is stripped off and put on all wherever you get podcasts. Right, Ryan? I don't I should probably yes, that's correct. This can be, yep, this show lives on uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Uh, you know, they can be found on Google, Amazon. Those are really the big four podcasts, but it exists okay. on just about any podcasting directory if somebody was to search for Rate My Retirement. All right, cool. And then if you uh, wanted to see my my uh, face, then Facebook or YouTube, right? And if you wanted the video version. Exactly. Because we do talk about the numbers, so I'm not sure anybody's even listened to that podcast because it's a be hard without the numbers. So, uh, um, all right. Dan, I had a, yes, sir. I had one question. Um, yep. If I wanted to move forward on this, uh, or yeah. some of your suggestions, what's the next step? Okay. So, you know, just reach out to me. I, you know, I'm, I'm happy okay. to kind of give you more specifics than what we can talk here on the show. Um, if you okay. want to do it yourself, um, or if you wanted me to help manage like a portion of your portfolio, just so I'm, right. I'm on your side for the rest, you know, you can call me whatever. Um, then yeah, we, mm -hmm. we'll talk off and then, uh, we can maybe okay. just open up a small IRA or Roth or whatever, and then sure, transfer it over. Sure. No fees, no cost to do that, no taxes. Okay. okay. All right, cool. All right. All right. Well, thanks, Mike. I really, really appreciate you doing this. Um, okay. And letting me help you. Hopefully, we can help other viewers. Um, but yeah, thanks again for doing this. Thanks, everybody. See you next time. Bye bye.